I'll keep this one a bit more uh, sketchy. So let me just make sure I save this. Um, let's see. Save this file. I'll just save it to my desktop for now. And now I'll make a new file. I usually just do the print default, which is 11 by 17 tabloid, something like that. Wait, I think someone asked for some sort of alien drone droid thing. I haven't done one of those in a while, so let me go ahead and do one of those. Cool. I'm gonna start similar to a, similar to the way I would on paper. I'm just gonna start with like a a quick, what I consider to be gray marker sketch or just a silhouette sketch. Okay, so if you're thinking of some creature or whatever, um, one way to do this, I think I've done this before, is you can just put shapes down. You know, you may have some idea in your head of, of what this thing is or does. Um, but you're kind of just putting stuff down to start. I'm not really feeling that, so let me do another one. Let's think, let's think. Let me know if you guys have any ideas, by the way, on this creature. There was one earlier. Let me see if I can find it in the chat. If you did miss the interview with Saul, Shoe designer, you can check that out on the channel as well. Let's see, an avatar would be nice. Oblivion style vehicle. I could do a, I could do some sort of a vehicle instead of an alien thing. When I think of Oblivion, I think of, um, you know, the bubble copter thing. I think that's what it was called, the bubble copter, copter. not copter, bubble copter. <laughs> Or bubble ship. But I think of that. You know, that was pretty sweet. So I could do something like that. Maybe just a, a quick warm up here. If we're doing some vehicles after that giant structure thing I did. Now, every method, means, tool, whatever has its advantages, right? So you kind of want to think about what you're working with and then figure out a way to leverage what it's good at. In this case, you know, I've done a sketch. I can make it bigger, smaller, whatever. If I want to set it on a scene, I could. I have an idea here. So maybe I scale it down and then I'm like, oh, it's actually kind of perched, much like the movie Oblivion on this cliffside or something. You could do that. Now I want to go back and watch the movie. But much like I would with gray markers in real life, I can take this, this very light brush and just plan. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to include knock the opacity back, and then get a nice crisp sketch in. You know, thinking about my perspective lines as well, kind of map these out. One thing Scott Robertson does in his drawings is a lot of times he'll map out his perspective, right? It just kind of helps. And then when you're ready to draw your final thing, I haven't seen the movie in a long time, so if I'm doing it a disservice by doing this, let me know. Um, I'm also not using any tools. But there are things I can do to kind of help me here. Like undo. <laughs> Actually, let me get my perspective line in like two. All right, so I've got an axis here. I've got my bubble. Thank you. 
Yeah, I think with digital, one of the things my brain does is I immediately go into, oh, I can undo that, I can undo that. And so it makes it really hard to be as confident as I am on paper. On paper, you kind of just have to approach it with, okay, that's the line, that's the line you drew, that's the line you get. Whereas digitally, you know, I know I can undo, I can tweak things here and there. You know? Maybe we'll do one more after this. I'll try and do that, that creature thing. Sound not clear? Wait, can you guys hear me? Yes, no? Let me know. Jachin is asking, what is this a sketch of? This is, I'm just doing some little sci-fi ship on a cliff or something. Tom says he debated a flat earther once and stormed off saying he'd walk to the edge of the earth. <laughs> okay, that's hilarious. Yeah, I don't remember what this ship looked like, but I remember it, it definitely had a very light kind of feel to it. I wanna try and replicate that a little bit. And I'll just use some gray to shade this one. So I'm not gonna go full color or anything like that. But I think, I think Sundays I'm gonna keep as a digital show so that you guys know, hey, if I wanna see Spencer do digital stuff, whether it's sci-fi stuff or other things, if you come by on a Sunday, that's what you're gonna get. So me sketching digitally on an iPad or like I am today on this Wacom Cintiq. I'm like super into um, <laughs> very primitive shapes right now with uh, rational transitions. That's kind of my jam right now. Almost like this designer engineered aesthetic. So I'm trying to see if I can make that work in this case. Just a thing, maybe it won't work here. Still want this to feel light. Need some rocket launchers. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry if it's kind of quiet. I'm gonna pull this mic very close to me. Can you guys hear me better now? Let me know if you can. If you can, then I'll know for sure that it was my mic and not something else, but I'll fix the audio in post for the replay. If you missed something, you can catch it there. Let's just do a silhouette of, actually, if this is a bubble ship. That is, that is very small for my cabin. I feel like I'm bungling this. I 
So I'll do one more sketch after this and then I'll call it good. So if you have an idea, I think well, someone wanted some like alien creature type thing. I can do that. Could be a sci-fi pro product. I don't really want to do products necessarily though. So let me know. Yeah, maybe this is some sort of door hatch. It has a nice blend into the main ship body. So there you can kind of see what we have. I'm going to shrink it just a little bit like so. Now give me some room. I'll give me some room to add these environmental things. Like I said, I wanted it to feel like it was on some cliffside. Also, I can tweak the perspective. If I just am careful, okay, I can actually distort this a little bit, tweak the perspective pull things in. Oops. <laughs> ah, I lost all that work. Um, and then use the warp tool here to kind of just fix things as we need. Okay. So just another trick for you. If you are working in Photoshop, you can do this in Procreate as well. FYI. So if you need to kind of tweak a sketch a little bit, you can do that. You know, maybe we've landed on some planet or something. Okay, this doesn't feel as bad. I was a little bit worried. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of the design, but it is what it is. Do something related to an Avatar movie. Jaken. Okay, Jaken, my apologies. Okay, good. The audio is clear. Someone was saying that the audio was... Um, not clear before so just making sure I just wanted to add some texture, dots, detail. You know, maybe this is some um, texture on the surface, could be ports, whatever the case may be. Just adding this. If you're doing a gray style rendering, which you'll see here in just a sec, you kind of have to make sure you have really good lines or acceptable lines, but also Any textures you want to include. Try and see what you can do with your pencil first. All right, I'm just going to rotate this. And then now I can clean up a little bit. Yeah, it's really weird it wouldn't let me use this certain brush as an eraser. I'm going to have to look into that because um, I did try some different settings with that brush. Because if that's the case, then that is certainly a first for me using Photoshop. I was trying to erase with a certain brush and it wouldn't let me do it <laughs> in case you're wondering what I'm talking about. So for this to really be like a Daniel Simon drawing, like I said, probably would have to do some 3D <clears throat> on top of this. I'm using a Cintiq 
connected to Photoshop. Hello, Jose. Welcome. Something related to the Avatar movie. Hmm. I don't know what that would be. Okay, let's see if I can do this now. All right, cool. So this brush works. So I want a nice big brush and let's go ahead and drop the opacity down of this layer. And now I'm just gonna subtly start giving these bodies some core shadows like so. At least that's based on what I've observed with Monsieur Daniel's drawings. I met him once in person. Interesting guy. He kind of brushed me off though. Just like, okay, whatever. Whoever you are, whatever. So that left a weird taste in my mouth personally, which goes back to Friday's discussion with Saul. You want to make sure you work on those relationships that you have. Not that he needed to have my relationship. I don't know, maybe. Maybe I'll make it big and then he'll be like, yo, Spence, you want to work with me? I'll be like, no, man. You brushed me off. Why would I work with you? Why? Tell me why. Okay, just playing with the opacity there. I'm going to back off the opacity of this one even more. Like so. And now let's just do a quick shadow. Mm, let me think about this. Okay, I'll just use the polygonal lasso tool here. Actually, let's start with... Start with the marquee tool. All right, and now let's get the body in. And I'll just go ahead and paint in under the landing gear here, like so. It's a little tail fin. All right, and erase what you don't need. I'm just making this a little darker so I can see where I need to erase. on this cliff side, because this is just all gray. I'll also make that gray, maybe erase a little bit there. And take a soft eraser. Erase a little bit down here. Discord's going crazy, but I haven't checked yet. <laughs> At least I think it's I think it's uh, my Discord. It might be another one. All right, a little bit on the mountains. Just like that. All right. Okay, so there is my quick spaceship type thing. You know, with maybe just a little bit of graphics on this tail rudder thing. 
Also, I can make the inside a little darker as well. So I'm gonna make a selection here. make a selection we'll make that darker if you want you can keep layering so if there was like a silhouette of a person for example in this cockpit just make a selection like so play with the opacity okay and now I've got at least some indication of something up front in the craft And once the gray is there, if you need to, you can also add white. Just rotating my canvas. Sketch Day Live, thanks again for joining. Um, if you do want to punch your, like, even the shadow core, again, I have, this will this will be out soon, but I will have brushes that you guys can use to do pretty much the same thing. All right, so if I want to punch that shadow core, I can. Oops. Same thing on the top. I feel like the stock brushes in any app aren't ever what I want. So I always make my own brushes. I do try to keep my tool set somewhat simple if I can, but at the same time, I do like to go through the trouble of making my own because I feel like it makes a big difference, particularly where, you know, with digital sketching, it's easy for everything to kind of look the same. Like you may have bought some brushes for uh, someone or whatever, or from someone. And so even taking the time to manipulate things kind of helps. But yeah, I missed I missed Photoshop. This is <laughs> this is kind of fun. And this is also sketch day live. We only got two sketches today, guys. I'm so sorry. I thought I was going to go a little faster with the other one, but that's okay. Next time, I got you. It's really been interesting seeing Photoshop over the years too, because um, at least when I started drawing in Photoshop, the brush engine was not that great. And now, frankly, it feels pretty much like Sketchbook Pro, which has a great brush engine. Uh, Corel Painter as well, always had a great brush engine. Um, I just think it was something that wasn't a priority for them until more recently. So we'll just keep working this a little bit and then we'll call it good, I think. So on the, the opposite side here, I just want to add a little bit of airbrushing. Wrong brush. Let's see, let's do my highlighter here. Perfect. Do this in white. 
So this is above the sketch, okay? Which means that it's going to obscure the sketch lines just a little bit. It's a nice touch I like to add to my sketches. Sometimes. Not always, sometimes. And since this leg is in the background, I'm just gonna make these kind of a silhouetted dark shape. All right, so just black. We can adjust the opacity here, make it as dark or light as we need. The darker it is, the more it fades into the background. So that's the idea with that. All right, a little bit of gray on the bottom here to help with the contrast. And one more thing I wanna do, let's go to filter, noise, oops, filter, noise, add noise. I'm just gonna add some noise to, yeah, there it is. So it adds a little bit of texture, okay? to your drawings, very subtle. But I think it's one of those things that can help your uh, digital sketch not feel so digital and dead. Yeah, I'm really gonna have to look into <laughs> to what's happening with the brush because it was working fine before and then all of a sudden I couldn't erase with the brushes I wanted to erase with. Really weird. Really, really weird. Couple texture dots on the ground here. Again, like I mentioned, since it's a black and white drawing with a little bit of gray, an homage to Mr. Simon. I wanna make sure my lines are good, that I have, I have or can draw texture where I need to. Maybe some text here. All right. Okay, guys. Well, thank you. Just to recap, here's our first sketch. There's our second sketch. You also saw my little social media ad. Um, so this is our first uh, sketch slash painting that we did. Okay, just took a picture of an old building near my home and decided to, uh, you know, add to it. If you want to see the before and after, also be sure to be sure to check out the Google Drive if you want this file. I'll upload the PSD file so you can download the PSD file, see the layers, play with it. But there's that old structure near where I live, and let's hide these brushes. So there it is before, and there it is after. Before, after. Okay, just like that. So using photos sometimes, if you're dreaming something up, can be a quick way to, to get it done. There's a lot more work I probably would or should do to this um, to make it work, but given just a quick hour, um, didn't quite get to to get every get done everything I wanted to get done. That's a say that 10 times. Um, and then here's our second sketch. 
right there. Something inspired by the movie Oblivion, maybe a, another little bubble copter type thing. Um, probably need to modify the design. If this were a serious thing, I'd do a several, obviously several versions of this, but um, just a quick, quick sketch here, a little bit of context environment. Gray shading and a simple presentation. 